In this video, I'll be going over how I made the executioner model. This video involves some 3D design, circuitry, coding, as well as some real world assembly and painting. Stay tuned to see how it all came together and some of the challenges along the way. If you're not familiar with Monster Bash, it's a concept developed by Trent from Miscast, where he invited a bunch of us nerdy crafters to draw a number of cards to add to a pile, which we then randomly selected seven cards from. Using these seven cards as inspiration, we now have to create a unique and terrifying monster. Most of my inspiration for crafting miniatures, scenery, and dioramas centers around the Warhammer universe and the grim dark aesthetic, so I suspect you'll see some influences creep into this monster. I'll be using a mostly digital approach to create my monster, but I'll be doing a bit of physical sculpting and epoxy modeling near the end. So let's start by drawing seven cards, shall we? Then we can form a loose plan. Let's talk about some ideas at this point. Now these are very interesting. My eye is first drawn to these two cards here. The TV monitor head from Dale of Monarch's Factory and the flesh-torn torso from Zambies. My mind is immediately drawn to a broken and battered body that's received cybernetic augmentations to the point where they are transhuman in form. This is going to set the overall tone of the monster. Our first program of choice is gonna be Blender. I always struggle with proportions, so loading up a public domain figure of a human male to start and rigging it so that we can articulate the bones in a dynamic pose. I think that the hardest part of sculpting a figure is the pose. If you can nail down the overall shape to be something interesting, the rest flows naturally. Here's what we have so far. Now let's move over into a different program. Using a VR headset and Adobe Medium, I'm able to mold and sculpt the figure as if it were made of real clay. I cut a gouge into the left side of this torso so that the body can start looking more like the concept invoked by the card. While I sculpt this, I remember the flower card from Trent. I'm gonna be interpreting this card a bit loosely as a sort of series of vines and growths on the body. They won't be organic in nature, but instead will be a series of electrical conduits or feeding tubes augmenting and sustaining the body. Images like the Matrix human pods come to mind here. Just like the tendrils of a vine spread across and cling to hard surfaces, so too will the electrical conduits and wires snake across the body of our monster. Another card that we can also knock out is one of the heads we pulled. I'm talking about the Jawless head from Will McDaniel here. Out of its mouth, more conduits and tendrils hanging loosely down from it. Once I'm happy with what I have so far, we're gonna import this base mesh back into Blender for the rest of the project. Partly to save some time and because I think it looks cool, I added an ominous hood on the head as well as a loose flowing skirt around the lower body. Now he's starting to look slightly like a member of the tech priests of the Warhammer universe. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the TV screen. We're gonna be mounting it on his left arm as a sort of heads up display, along some other monitors. These provide this creature relevant info on his hunt for whatever it is he's hunting. Looking good so far. Let's take a look at some of the other cards we pulled. I think we can combine this axe from Billion Dollar Clown Farm and the pipe from Eliza to make a sort of steampunk gear mech axe. I'm gonna scale the axe to be freakishly huge compared to our monster. It's going to add an imposing look to the silhouette. The last card really puzzled me. How's it gonna tie in this clown face from Lila Mev? Then it struck me. Corruption by the forces of chaos in the Warhammer universe, specifically the god Nurgle. He's the god of disease, pestilence, and decay. So it fit perfectly with the overall theme of the monster. Now there's these little demonic creatures called Nurglings. These little impish creatures are jovial and playful in nature. They'll hop and dance around their larger fellow demons, amusing them with their jolly antics. Perfect for the clown theme. I found a model online that would fit perfectly on the monster. No need to make this one from scratch. We can just 3D print it and go. We're gonna have to pick a name for it though. Hmm. What about Frankie? Uh, Canarb? I don't think that looks anything like me. All right, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. Let's talk about the television head card again. 
Now the scale I'm going to print the model out will be determined by the size of the LCD screen I can use. My father was kind enough to let me raid his electronic stash for this. I was on a time crutch and shipping one of these from China usually takes months. Check out how tiny these things are. So after measuring it and scaling it appropriately, let's figure out how to run the display. We'll check back on the monster assembly once the print finishes. We have to figure out how to make this run and display things. Using an Arduino, which is basically a tiny computer, we can feed in electrical signals to the LCD via these wires. But what to show? Well, what better display than to showcase the chaotic nature of the Monster Bash challenge? The randomizer video that Trent made would be perfect for this. A rapid series of flashing cards on screen, which randomly pause to highlight the cards drawn. I took some liberties with the randomness element here, as I wanted it to showcase the cards that made up this monster. So if we wait for it to cycle, we'll see each of the cards that made up my monster cycle on screen and pause. This Arduino can also power and flicker some LEDs which will add some more ambiance to the model. Perfect. All right, let's see how those prints came out. Not too bad. Had one failure, so I had to reprint the ax. Oh, and if you're interested in the files I designed, I'll put them up on my Patreon as well as my online store. They print nicely at 28 millimeter scale as well and can fit into any sort of tabletop games you play these days, like One Page Rules, Stargrave, Proxies for Warhammer, you name it. I've kept the Nurgling separate and linked it in the description from its source if you want to grab it. I also printed out a thicker base with this sci-fi pattern I got somewhere on Thingiverse. Scaled up, of course. To get the Arduino into a form that can fit well into the base, I copied over all the wiring onto the new board without the pin soldered on. Some hot glue to keep the board in place, as well as the connections insulated. Then making sure everything still worked right, I ran the color-coded wires through a hole in the base and fished them through the body of the monster. From here, the wires are gonna blend in with the monster's aesthetic anyway, so I'll let some of them loop and dangle freely. Four wires go to the arm with the monitor, two go to the shoulder-mounted searchlight, and two go to the ax hand. Drilling and pinning, epoxy, super glue, we're all used to get this thing together. To get some more control over the look of the wires, I used some milliput mixed with green stuff. Some of the more experienced sculptors in the challenge told me it's a good mix to get good results with. The sculpting epoxy also works well to fill any of the holes from 3D printing the model, as well as the wiring going through the body. Now I'm not 100% sure that painting a circuit board like this is the best idea, so I added some paneling with plastic art across the back of the monitor. This will hopefully keep the crucial bits of circuitry from getting damaged while we apply paint. Let's prime this thing. Now to figure out the colors. I mix across some reds, blues, and earth tones, like green for the nurgling and browns to tie it all together. I'm doing some quick work with the airbrush to get the base layers down alongside some gradients. Just applying multiple thin layers all blended together are going to work nicely. Once I was happy with the base layers, I took out my brush and started painting the details. Also, just, just look at this cute little guy. The dangling was really fun to paint. This was my first time trying an oil wash as well, so that was kind of neat. I like how it lets you control the amount of wash you get in places and brush off parts you don't want darkened. After a coat of varnish, which was supposed to be matte, I'm not sure what happened there, we have a finished monster. Thank you to Trent from Miscast for inviting me to join in this awesome challenge with a ton of talented and creative people. And be sure to check out the playlist for the other builds, as well as take a look at some of the builds made by you guys, the viewers, in the gallery linked below. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.